Ah, now I can tell that's not a fern, but some further assistance for those new to pteridology, which is the study of and enthusiasm for ferns, club mosses, quillworts and horsetails. This presentation is a second extra help supplement to the new wild guide, Britain's Ferns, explaining a few difficulties that can be resolved quite easily. Fern identification itself can be quite tricky. For that, please refer to the wild guide, Britain's Ferns. But it might be useful to avoid a couple of common difficulties people encounter, but only as beginners. The number one difficulty seems to be in telling apart the fronds of hard fern and polypody. Probably the best check is to compare the way the segments decline towards the base of the frond. In hard fern, these pinny get dramatically smaller and smaller, which they don't in polypody. Also, hard fern has its fronds clustered rosette-like, whereas polypody fronds, arising from a creeping rhizome, spread around. The second frequently experienced difficulty is finding holly fern where holly fern never grows. It is interesting how often people discover the rare holly fern in lowland habitats, particularly in woodland. What they are actually finding are juvenile plants of the hard shield fern, which can look very similar until you get your eye in. When finding such plants, the first consideration should always be habitat. Holly fern grows in open upland habitats. Here it is on an ancient volcanic crag at an altitude of around 500 metres, and here growing on upland limestone. Hard shield fern usually grows in damp, shady, often woodland situations, though also on open limestone, so of course the problem can occur in either habitat. The main thing is to remind yourself that if you're in damp, shady woodland, you are most unlikely to have found holly fern. Having inspected the frond undersides for sori, absent in juvenile shield ferns yet present in all but the smallest holly ferns, look around. There are bound to be adult hard shield ferns nearby and you will soon find intermediates to demonstrate how the holly fern-like pinny of juveniles divide more and more deeply as the plant matures until they are fully divided. At first, pinny of adult holly and juvenile shield ferns are deceptively similar. The fronds develop from simply pinnate, that is divided once, to bipinnate, divided twice, and no longer resemble holly fern at all. When you get to know them, ferns are not only different from their apparent lookalikes, but also from each other and can be recognised and named at a glance. Of course, for confident classification, Casual jizz observations of this sort require proper diagnosis, ideally facilitated by the wild guide to Britain's ferns. Here is a roadside group of ferns which I jizz identified for this presentation, with an explanation of how jizz worked for me. Some are very alike, but can still be differentiated quite quickly. Number one, top left. Doesn't everybody recognise bracken at a glance? Two. Top right, golden male fern, narrow frond with a glossy finish, yellowish or golden with ginger hairs on the midrib, which all enhances its ungreen appearance. The smallest segments, the pinules, are plain and rounded. Three, bottom left, borer's male fern, greener than the golden male fern and not glossy. Pinules square tipped with, look closer, conspicuous acute teeth. Four, bottom right, Common male fern, very like borrows, but its pinules have serrated margins and contract to a narrow, rounded tip. 5. Top left, lady fern. Similar front to the three preceding male ferns, but the pinules are more dissected, almost to the midrib. In open situations, the pinule margins are curled back. 6. Top right, broad buckler fern. Also more dissected than the male ferns, and pinules with curled back margins, but the frond is broad, thrice divided, and almost triangular. Bottom left and right, in the same situation, but not on this occasion, we might also find the lemon-scented fern, and yet another of those often baffling male ferns, the narrow male fern. Be ready, if you get into them, to be perplexed by the male ferns. Finally. 
If you stick to their identification key, horse tails are not too difficult, but please don't blame all eight of them for being noxious weeds. Only field horse tail is ever really problematical. And it's not mare's tail, as the gardening gurus tend to name it erroneously, which is the flowering plant Hipparis vulgaris, which grows on stream beds with its green parts above water. Only water horsetail grows in a similar habitat, and it's very different. 